Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music movies, art and culture, and today in another unscripted movie review, we're gonna be talking about Paddington 2. So okay, when I first went to go see the first Paddington movie, it was a good six months to a year after everyone else has seen it. I was late to the punch with this one. And as such, I kind of avoided the expected critical blowback that didn't happen. See, a lot of critics went to the first Paddington thing. It was just gonna be another dumb, special effects heavy kids movie with a lot of fart jokes and a lot of goofy slapstick. And that didn't really happen, much to everybody's pleasant surprise. It was instead a pretty quaint, pretty small scale, very earnest kids movie retelling Paddington's origins. Comes from Peru, comes to London, and yet played with a very contemporary twist in terms of his adoption with the Browns, specifically by honing in and on subtext that I don't think anybody was really paying attention to, but kind of seems inspired a good year or two later. See, the thing that with Paddington that they were discriminating against him, that London might not be as approachable to him now, it's not because he's a bear, which is the obvious, it's because he's an immigrant and through a lot of the placement of the language through a lot of the isolation feels and a very heavy dose in the subtext it made it clear that it was drawing a pretty stark parallel between certain anti-immigrant feelings towards people in current modern day uk and what paddington was going through in coming from peru to the united kingdom to london and it ultimately plays out a little broad at spots because after all this is indeed a kids movie but there was that adult level of humor and poise and subtext that gave that film the amount of emotional weight that it had. Yeah, it did feel all a little bit too neat and precocious at points. This is this brand of kids movie. And there is a certain impeccable Britishness to it all that, yeah, of course I found pretty damn charming. But at the same time, where you could take these themes afterwards, especially coming in the aftermath of Brexit in the UK and the current controversy surrounding what the immigrants mean in the course of the United Kingdom and in Europe, there was a lot of bountiful opportunities to explore these themes. Paddington 2 doesn't quite get there. Now, granted, it is still a good movie. I like a lot of this movie. I like what it's trying to do. I like a lot of the humor and slapstick. I like the overall ideas behind it. But if it feels a little bit more slight compared to the first Paddington, that feels very much intentional. And I'm not sure it was the best option to make sure this movie resonated as much as his first one. So I'll give you a brief summary of the plot. Paddington, he's looking to go get a flip book for his aunt's 100th birthday, and this flip book will manage to capture what London looks like now so he can actually bring it back to her. Now that flip book was also framed as a treasure map from how they originally got it, and the secret villain of this piece, played by Hugh Grant, who's just hamming it up and having a blast, just like Nicole Kidman did in the original, he steals the book and then frames Paddington for it, and thus he gets sent to jail. Now, on one level, you think this could be a really potent opportunity. Hey, immigrant populations, they might often get coerced by disruptive law enforcement, and they could be sent into that environment. There could be a pretty strong level of social context there, and that doesn't happen. Like, at all. This movie is not aiming to have that deeper level of feeling or subtext beyond, hey, put trust in your family, in your community, and that will pay off better for you. Because it really is, Paddington shows himself as the glue that brings families and people together with that relentless, cheerful optimism, even if he does kind of be a little bit clumsy and slapsticky at some points. But even as he did it to his neighborhood in London, he does it too in the prison as well. And you know what? It was silly. I expected some of it that it would play to a kid's sense of humor, and I can appreciate that, but it didn't help the stakes, or at least it didn't help the emotional stakes. In terms of some of the overall scale and epic feeling, I kind of get that it's going a little bit broader. It actually does manage to get that with a particular train sequence near the end that I thought was pretty good, but at the same time, if I was looking for the greater emotional gut punch beyond a certain family element that comes in the very final moments of the movie, you didn't really get that. That's not exactly disparaging the rest of the movie. A lot of the performances are great. Hugh Grant pretty much steals the entire movie as that British actor villain type and you can tell he's having the time of his life with that and I really do appreciate that. I like how well the Browns family play their emotional arcs even if you do get the feeling that it's a little bit abbreviated because there's so much going on in this film. And yeah, for the scenes in the prison, it was played arguably a little safer than I would have but again, this is 
as a Paddington movie, it's a kid's movie, it's not looking to push any boundaries. And I will say this, the direction style, the whole overarching tone of the movie is really unbelievably charming, even if you get the feeling that there isn't a tremendous amount of stakes. But at the same time, and this is something I will have to stress, there is a moment where Paddington is faced with disappointment from certain people in his community that let him down. At least until the point where they will all come back and make sure that his things will go properly in the end. Everything is tied up in a neat little bow everybody is redeemed in a certain way even our primary villain and i have to admit that kind of bugs me a little bit i think the film was willing, if it was willing to take more of a chance in showing that yeah sometimes all families don't always will step up and come through sometimes they will let you down or you may, may potentially have that additional level of subtext saying yeah this is prison paddington and you're not exactly going to make it all better with lots of marmalade or you're running into situations where some people can't be redeemed as much as paddington might try or as much as he might hope for someone some of the family can come through but sometimes for human nature that doesn't always pay off in the end in the same way now granted this is a paddington movie it's ultimately going to be very optimistic and heartwarming but you need to be really careful with this sort of thematic tone and arc because it can start to tread a little bit close to being a little saccharine and this movie was right on the line at least for parts of it with me especially considering how flimsy the stakes ultimately felt when i walked out of the film i will say in terms of direction it is still a gorgeous look movie a lot of the dialogue really punches the lighting and overall golden feeling of real warmth that comes through the film is really unmistakable i really do appreciate that while still capturing what contemporary london would otherwise look like even though i do feel the grit was a little toned down for this i don't think that was the best idea either but again it is a good movie i kind of like how so much of the slapstick dill does play with that almost a rue goldberg machine-esque elegance in terms of all the little contraptions going off to make everything just fly off the handles it really is quite imaginative and the dialogue as always is so quick and sharp with that level of british humor that i can't appreciate so overall it's a really really well executed product it just at the core of it it feels a little bit more slight even if again paddington as a character is tremendously endearing and you can tell that his original stages of emotional conflict did have some weight i just wish there was a little bit more stakes overall and the movie was going to push a little bit harder that being said, for me, I liked it. I'm thinking it's a solid 7 out of 10. Definitely check it out if you get the chance. It's definitely a really sweet kids movie. The kids will love it, but the adults will not feel condescended to. It's actually extremely watchable, especially if you're paying attention to the dialogue, because it really is quite sharp. Beyond that, I hope you guys get a chance to check it out. And you know what? I'm kind of hungry. I could go for some marmalade right about now. Or maybe just like a burger. Uh, either way, it worked for me. Beyond that, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.